one behind. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to prepare for the spoken word by Pastor James. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> I might need this. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah, number three. Morning, everybody. Good morning. God bless you. How are you doing today? Good. Beautiful. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. I know the Lord is pleased by his children who step forth and say, I want to worship you in spirit and in truth. I want to be in the house of God. I want to be with the people of God who are taking their time to focus on what is good and acceptable in his eyes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. I'm going to be up here struggling with this for a minute. <laughs> That we love. All right. Um, first of all, if 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 anybody um, has a desire to to sow a seed into um, abundant life worship centers ministry, uh, we have two ways to do that. One, if you're online, there is a, a, a pen for the cash out, and two, if you're in the house, there's a basket here to my left where you can at, at any time drop. Uh, your tithes and offerings into the basket. And what I will do now is just to really pray for that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us an opportunity to give back a portion which you, that you have blessed us with for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, Lord, we pray that every resource that you provide will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that those that don't know the Lord would reach a decision and say, I want to be saved. And then those that when they are saved uh, walk through that journey, that sanctification journey by your Holy Spirit, that transformation that only Jesus and his Holy Spirit can do. When people say yes to the Lord, then his spirit can work within you. When they say yes, then you have an opportunity to be all that God has called for you to be. Lord, we thank you and pray that every resource be used. But that purpose, in Jesus' precious name we pray. And the church said, amen. 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 So the word that the Lord dropped in my spirit to share with you today is actually, it, it didn't come um, suddenly in, 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 a, in a period of time. It, it, it has come over time. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that this is a, a word that has already been spoken by the, the, the Lord. It's already been demonstrated by his son Jesus Christ and it's already been activated and in full operation, amen, by his Holy Spirit and those that listen, trust, and obey. And that word is that unity is what we need. Amen. Unity is what we need. Amen. Unity, unity is what we need. And the passage of scripture I want to share with you today, um, the first one is Psalm, the 133rd chapter of Psalm. And it reads like this. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verses 2 and 3 goes on to say it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard and even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore. Amen? Amen. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I'm not sure if I'll have many arguments that it's good to be unified with people. It's good to be with people that love you, that appreciate you, that encourage you, that help you, that support you, that teach you, 
that mentor you, that counsel you, the ones that, that always have your best interest in mind. It is good to be unified both geographically when you're in that particular space and then even if across the many miles, however it is, sometimes it's, it's just a communication via a text message. Sometimes it's a phone call. Sometimes it's, it, it, it's really coming together in a Zoom call or whatever it is. Sometimes it's even not really having direct communication, but knowing that somebody is praying for you, yes, knowing that somebody yes, loves you, yes. knowing that somebody cares about you and what you're going through, whatever it is that you're going through, knowing that they are unified with you, Amen. loving Amen. you, Amen. caring for you, doing what it is that they can do for you when they can. Amen? Amen. Good and pleasant to dwell together in unity. So when you look unity up and all, you know, and look at the Merriam-Webster definition of unity, it says that it is the state of being united or joined as a whole. The state of being united or joined as a whole. Now that has a lot of different applications because a car has many parts that come from all over the world and they come together and people assemble them with precision and it becomes an automobile. Hmm. It's a collection of parts that's come together and it's a unified whole. It's a unified, it's a car. It's not a tire. <laughs> it's not an alternator. Right. You know, it's not a switch, a battery. It's a, a car. car because it's... those parts have come together. Come on, come on. And then, you know, we have families that have different members. They are blood connected. Sometimes they are spiritually connected. We'll touch on the spiritual unity later. But oftentimes, you know, the initial family is who you've been birthed to. Um, and then we have, you know, communities and businesses that are a collection of people mm -hmm. that come together. Whether they live together or in a business, they come together to to do something special, they might want to be, uh, you know, a, a hospital or a small store in, in, in a neighborhood or some other type of business. They may build, you know, uh, houses and they are a collection of people, a group of people who come together to achieve a certain purpose in a community. Hopefully that purpose is to live peacefully and raise families, healthy, strong families. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, we have homes. Homes are, again, a collection of many parts coming together. An architect designs what the house should look like, and general contractor goes out and subcontracts to different people to do different things. Somebody's going to lay a foundation. Somebody's going to do the drywall. Somebody's going to put in the plumbing, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. Somebody's going to do all those things to have those many parts become a whole, a unified whole, come on. joined together come on, as a house. Come on, come on. And with all due respect, that's great. That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's a new word, amen, <laughs> wonderful. But I'm here, really, God challenges us to go beyond mm -hmm. that basic definition of pieces coming together to make a whole. Come on. And when we think about that, there's a spiritual unity that is so much more than what Merriam-Webster conceived and wrote out in this definition of unity. That spiritual unity of the church is organic mm -hmm. in character, meaning that it's alive. Right. A house is not alive. That's right, that's right. A car is not alive. Those are what we call inanimate things. Oh. They're a thing. The church is not a thing. The church is a body. That's right. The church has life. The church is vital. Yes. And God is calling us to a whole nother level of unity. Yes. That respects because God created everything. So he knows about the architect. He knows about these business leaders. He knows about those that are in the community. He understands these things because he created it all, knows all, and is everywhere. But he's calling his people to a spiritual unity that far exceeds 
us just coming together in church. Come on. Us just coming together as a family. Us just being in the same place but, real, but, but, but having an issue. Come on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Come on. The church is more than a collection of people. Amen. The church is a spiritual connection mm -hmm. that supersedes, is more powerful, and has much more importance than just the things that we see or the businesses that we work in or wherever it is that we live. The church is calling for us to be unified in one thing, and that is to understand that God is our creator. His Jesus Christ, as the song said, died for our sins. And that we have an opportunity to say yes to God and be part of a living, vital, powerful kingdom of God here on earth. Yes. A kingdom of God here on earth. A kingdom of God that is pulled together by the spiritual vitality of people understanding that I am a child of God. Yes. I believe God made me. I believe that Jesus is his son. I believe that he came in flesh, amen, and took on the sins of the world, died in the resurrection power of Christ, of, the, of his father in heaven, excuse me, raised him from the dead in that same spirit is what we need to access right now yes. in order to really be the spirit really manifest the spiritual unity that God is calling us to. He's calling us to a higher level. Can you say higher level? Higher level. God is calling us to a higher level of spiritual unity. And that's how we get that. How good and how pleasant it is to dwell with brethren in unity. Yes. So like the human body, this is not an architect. God designed us. Yes, yes, yes. Listen to God designed you. Yes, yes, yes. God made you. God laid out the blueprint for you. We as little bitty humans still don't understand how it is that God did that. So we, we, we see through the glass real dimly. We have huge, massive amounts of knowledge and wisdom. We've been studying the human body forever. And we have made many breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. But the breakthroughs are just understanding what God has designed. That's we are right. trying to live out and understand how to keep it healthy, how to live long, how to do things to heal, how to stay healthy. But getting back to this spiritual unity, God is the architect of the body of Christ. That's right, that's Our right. Our body physically, but then the body of Christ that's right. that he's calling us to. And I'm going somewhere here because this is going to challenge you. This is not going to be easy. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, turn away from our sin, the Holy Spirit create, puts us into the body of Christ. Yes. And we have access to that spiritual unity, amen? And then that Holy Spirit, if we listen, trust, and obey day by day, minute by minute, we are slowly and sometimes quickly transformed into the people that God has called for us to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the process. Yes, amen. And that sounds great. We could be saying, hallelujah, I'm a child of Christ, I, I believe. And then we remember. Well, let me just go back to the hallelujah. At that point, we, we, we all should be saying, we are one. You know, everything should be all good. We say God is our Father. We believe Jesus Christ saved us. We listen to the Holy Spirit. We should be all good, right? Right? Well, let's think about that. Come on. Let's go to page two of these little notes here. <laughs> Um, first of all, let me ask a few questions. Do we all look alike? No. Do we all think alike? No. Mm. Do we behave the same? No. So then we all what? We different. We different. We all different. But who created us? God. God. Amen. Do we um, do we agree on, on, on a whole bunch of things here? No. Mm. Disagreements. Do we all give, you know, do we all lift everybody up and give credit where credit is due all the time? No. Mm. So we all, you know, we try to put people on levels. Them, we, we all, we all that. Mm. Mm. Wow. 
So let me just point this out. From God's perspective, in the spiritual unity that we're called and challenged to, he's not calling us to be the same. It's okay for us to be different, look different, act differently, behave differently, think differently, do different things, be part of whatever it is that you're a part of. That's okay. In fact, that's the way we were designed. So, if we design differently, we have disagreements, we have all these different things going on, let's go back to that, that, that scripture that said, you know, it is good and pleasant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for us to be in harmony. Why? Right. <laughs> Why? Well, from God's perspective, and I just want to lay it to you, it's, it's, it's because we need to be an example right. of the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right here on earth. That's not just for the Bible. That's not just for the Holy Rollers. That's for you. Amen. That's the challenge. How are you going to be unified in who your father is, who created you, who, who it is that you let to be Lord of your life, who it is that's leading and guiding you? Because there are many people, yeah. if, you look, if you look at any two different things, there are many people that say, I'm following God and I believe this. Somebody else, I'm following God, I believe this over here. And you crazy and then you crazy. Come we on. got a whole lot of finger pointing. Come on. And people saying, the Lord said, God told me, and this is like east and west, north and south. So somebody ain't right. I submit to you that sometimes we just not right. Mm. We're not taking the time to understand, God, if this is what you show me, show me how that lines up with what you've written in your word. Show me how that show, how, show me how this is unifying the Father and His and his will for everybody to be saved. Show me how this is what Jesus would be doing if he was standing right next to you right now. Show me how the Holy Spirit is moving us to unity and love and, and grace and kindness for each other. Show me that. Yeah. Sometimes we need to shut up yeah. and ask God, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. How can I be an example of spiritual unity right here on earth? Even though this person looks this way, thinks that way, and is acting that way. Lord, what's my role in this situation where my, where my family members are at odds with each other, don't even want to talk to each other? What am I supposed to do? How can I build a bridge? You need to get before the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Spirit, I don't know why they fight. I don't know why this person shot that one. I don't know why they're going to talk to each other. I don't know what's going on in this situation. I need your help right now. Yeah. I'm challenging everybody that here, be a bridge builder. Be a bridge. Figure out what a gap is. Ask God to help you understand what you can do. Sometimes you just might just need to pray. Sometimes you might need to pull the two people together and say, hey, what is, the, what is one thing that we agree upon? What's the one thing? Because we get caught up and a whole bunch of things don't mean nothing. Are we supposed to be loving each other? Okay, we agree upon that. How do we do that? What's step one? Amen. Amen. But now nah, I'm mad at them from 40 years ago. They talked about my mama. So what? <laughs> what that got to do with right now? Yeah. What does that have to do with you loving your sister, brother, mother, cousin? Your neighbor. Amen. Who they voted for. I can't talk to them. They voted for so and so. So what? Yeah. What does that got to do with the fact that we are all created equal? By God. Amen. Commanded to love one another. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing that God can't do. Harmony is critical because we have to cooperate, cooperate, Lord help me with these words, <laughs> and collaborate as God intended. Amen. As God intended, not as I intended, because when we, if we really honest with ourselves, close our eyes and say, okay, who do I want to work with? I want to work with people that I'm cool with. Right. I want to work with some folks that ain't going to be hollering at me. I want to work with some folks that ain't going to be cussing. Ain't going to be tripping when I bring up an idea. I want to work with some people that might listen to me, that might care for me, that might help me. But everybody ain't like that. Right. So again, I'm just challenging you. 
when you see these issues and stuff, it, it's, it's well, 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 how do I, how do I figure out how God wants us to work this out? Because sometimes when we look at when we look at our own tools, they don't work. Because mm -hmm. I grew up on tools that if you got with me, I'm gonna get with you. That ain't always gonna work. Right, right. You know, I remember when I was growing up, my father used to say, uh, <laughs> "Jesus help me." <laughs> My father used to say when stuff got ugly, and, you know, if I was getting disrespectful or, you know, feeling myself or whatever, he would say, I'll slap the taste out of your mouth. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Maybe I need to back up. Yes, Lord. All right? What I'm saying here is God is calling us because we need to reverence him. Right. He might take our life from us. Mm. My father might have slapped me, but God can take away everything from you. Come on. You need to say, Lord, I don't know what's going on here. This is ugly. Uh, I don't have the tools here. But again, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me. Do I need to pray? Do I need to figure out how we can build a bridge between this person and that person? Help me see how to do that. Because that's the living spirit that we have access to. When we call him on God. Amen. When we his child. Because we need something beyond what we have. Beyond what we know. I can't take my father's lesson of getting mad at everybody that's coming against me just because I'm a little bit bigger than them and say I'm going to slap the taste out of your mouth and think that's going to work all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we punking out or being, you know, if you threaten with your life as being threatened, do whatever you can to survive. Amen. But a lot of stuff we get, we have issues with. We text it. We, you know, we talking on the phone, hanging up on people. These things are not life threatening. Right, right, right. But they are threatening our life in a spiritual come sense. Come on, come on. Because when we cut people off, I ain't talking to them. Come on. Got the hand. I'm blocking everybody. I'm deleting this person. I'm doing. Really? Is that what God is calling you? Is that is that the bridge He's calling you to build? Come on. Is that the spiritual unity we spoke? Because we are in the process, just like we got converted from sinner to saint. Amen. Because God didn't throw us away because we was acting a fool. Why we got to throw everybody else away? People make mistakes. They're struggling. So the same grace, grace, grace. that God gave us Amen. that he didn't just strike you down when you was acting a fool, extend that to somebody. That's right. Ask God how you can make that happen. Because we're not going to agree on these things. Mm -hmm. We need to agree on what's the purpose of God for that person. Yes. Because I'll tell you a personal story, just in general, no names. Um, one of the people that was most, I would call, it's like they got up every day and ate a bowl of ground glass. And then came into work and was like throwing that at me. Just evil, nasty, funky attitude every day. And I'm like, what is that? What is wrong with this person? Mm -hmm. And I had to make a choice. Yeah. They were a little smaller than me. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's what you want? You don't you really don't want this. I, I could have came with, you know, we're about to go thump. It's about to be on. Right. But God pricked my heart and said, you know what? It ain't about me. It ain't about me. Yep. Them being salty, burn up. And ugly every day, what had nothing to do with me. Right. Had everything to do with that they were hurt yeah. deeply yeah. by somebody else and broken. Yep. Come and on. had put up such a shell of hardness and stiffness. Yep. And I'm gonna get you before you get me. Yep. I'm gonna cut you off before you mess, before you hurt my feelings. That's what they was dealing with. Yeah. So then I knew I had to pray for that person. Yeah. And when God presented the opening, I actually had to do something that was totally unprofessional and say, you know what, I love you. Don't, if you don't hear another word out of my mouth, you need to know that I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Yeah, you cussed me out. Yeah, you almost threatened my livelihood, which is not going to happen, amen. Right. But I'm praying for you. Yeah, come on. Because your ugliness ain't got nothing to do with me. No. Just because you said I'm incompetent don't mean I ain't. Come on. Pastor Jewel will let you know she her mom said, just because somebody say you is something don't mean you is. Right. Man. You ain't got to respond to that. That's God right. is calling us to a whole nother level of unity. To the point where you can look beyond somebody's ugliness. Yes. Beyond their ignorance. Beyond their being uninformed. Stupid. 
Young. Oh, but it's not bad to be young. Forgive me. Young is good. Sometimes I wish I was young. I could run a lot farther. <laughs> um, immature in the mind. Mm -hmm. Not understanding. Amen. Don't let me offend these children over here. They got me. Amen. Y'all all up. I'm so glad y'all here. Praise God for you. <laughs> and for the parents. And spiritual people that bring in children. Yeah. So they can hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. But again, God is calling us to a whole nother level Amen. of unity. Because Lord knows, it's tens of millions of people that probably think way different than you do. And our challenge is not to solve for tens of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Not to try, as we say, you ain't trying to boil the ocean. <laughs> what you're trying to do is... One person at a time. One person at a time. One interaction at a time. One. Ask God to help you bridge gaps. Help, help, help you be one that is a peacemaker. Help you also try to understand where people are coming from. I had to listen to that person, going back to the example of my job. I had to listen to that person and really understand that, oh, man, this happened to this person 40 years ago. They were hurt bad by their own family, mm -hmm. rejected by their family. And so they had over time built this cell up of I'm not gonna let nobody reject me. I'm gonna get with I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be so hard and so aggressive that nobody's gonna get to me. So that's our challenge. Amen. That's spiritual unity. And there's some there's some help for us in the word of God, and there's also some help for us with, through his spirit. So Ephesians, and I just want to touch on some of this. Look, before I go there, I'm going to go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, for those that are just kind of speeding ahead, want to get queued up. The last thing I want to say about why harmony is critical is it forces us to look to God for the wisdom that it takes to work with people Amen. who think, act, look, differently than we do. Amen. God really wants us to embrace, as hard as it is, to embrace the opportunity, I will call it, to really understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Why is it that so-and-so thinks like that? Right. What happened to them in their life that they respond like that? Right. I need to be interested in what happened. What are those things that 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 helps a person think and act the way that they do? Right. Because I could, and that's the deeper level of spiritual unity, and, the, and 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 what you need the Holy Spirit to help you with. Because sometimes we just respond with the surface. Yeah. You tweeted this. You said this. You said that. I don't care why you did it. I'm about to get with you. Mm -hmm. well, really? What if God looked at us and said? Mm. You slipped up, bam! Mm -hmm. I'm striking you down. We don't want that. Mm -mm. We want God to say, son, daughter, that was wrong. <laughs> you need to fix that. You need to apologize. You need to go in a different, different, different direction. We want a loving father to correct us right. versus crucifying and crushing us. Right. That's the model. We need to help understand why people are, think, and do what they're doing as the Lord leads you, amen, so that there's a possibility that there can be a connection, a God-inspired transformation, and they might say, oh, that person, I came at them, and they didn't even trip. They didn't even come back and cuss me out. They didn't come right. back and trip on me. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't fire on me. What is it about that person? Right. What to the point where they're looking at you like, man, I might want to get some of that. Amen. I'm over here on 50. They on one. <laughs> chilling. Saying, what's happening with your family? How's your sister and brother doing? Oh, I see that your, your, your baby just turned four. Happy birthday. You know, you on this love page and they like, huh? Mm-hmm. Be different in a way that inspires others to see God in you. Amen. So that even if they never come back to you, Amen. they might never apologize for cussing you out. They might never apologize for the dirt they did. 
you might not even know 40% of the dirt that they did that didn't get back to you. Right. Right. The point is, God is calling us to a whole other level of unity. Another level. He's the one that's going to help us to get there because I'm, I'm the first to admit, I ain't got all the tools to bridge the gaps of people. Yep. But one person at a time. Yep. One relationship at a time. Yep. One inspiration from the Holy Spirit to have me say something that is loving, kind, truth. Because sometimes you just need to contract a, combat a lie with the truth. Yeah. Oh, you said A, B, and C. Well, no, it's V, E, and F. Period. I'm done with the conversation. I ain't fighting with you. Right. You can believe what you want. God said this is what it is. That's what it is. When he said it, I believe it. It's done. You got to recognize the power you have to speak truth in any situation, speak love in a situation, and not get into no fisticuffs fighting. Amen. Or Twitter, or Snap, or Facebook. Face your battles with God helping you versus using these other vehicles or responding at a high level. Amen. That's good. So let me close out with this last passage of scripture. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And it says, therefore, I, a prisoner, Paul, for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling because we are called to a holy unity. That's what the unity is. That we are not called to be everybody's buddy, buddy. I love people, but all I can do is pray for them. We ain't in relationship. I ain't hollering at them. I love them. I pray for them. Other people I love, pray, and I can be in relationship with them. So you got to understand it's all different levels and access that you have when you are serving the Lord and that you are leading a life worthy of your calling as a child of God. Your calling as a child of God doesn't mean everybody that, that, that you are the, at the beck and call of everybody, that you got to solve their problems per se. Amen. Let me keep going. For you have been called by God. You wasn't called by a big mama. You wasn't called yes. by an apostle. You was called by God yes. to be a child of God living on purpose. Okay. And that purpose has all of your greatness to flow out and be manifested. Verse 2, always be humble and gentle. Yeah. And there are even levels to that. Sometimes humble and gentle is a soft and a kind word. Sometimes humble and gentle is a clear directive because you have authority and sometimes you need to use your authority. You don't need to scream the authority, but you need to make sure, look, son, you don't do that. You go over here. Oh, brother, that's not appropriate. This is what we do when we when the women come in. Yeah. You know, humble doesn't mean I'm so weak and that's not what I'm talking about. Amen. Humility is power under control, yes. authority under control, strength under control. Amen. So you're powerful, you have authority, and you have strength through what God has enabled you to do. Amen. And you don't need to be puffed up. I'm so and so, Pastor, so and so. You got to shut up when I talk. That's totally inappropriate <laughs> from my perspective. Amen. Somebody else might think that's all good. I'm not that. I'm not the one. If I tell you something with authority, it's because I, I got some back in the hand. That's right. And you have the right actually to say, um, Pastor James, can you help me understand? Right. Amen? Amen. This is not authority to beat anybody down. Right. Amen. This is just the authority of what God has entrusted me to do. I wouldn't be standing there. If, I, if, if God didn't give me something, I wouldn't stand and believe. Me. Trust me. Amen. I would not be up here. <laughs> But I believe that we can be always humble and gentle in the way that we even exercise our strength, yeah. our power, and our authority. Amen. Sometimes you're just the one that's two years older, or you're the mother or the father, or you're the big cousin. You don't have to beat people down with it. That's right, that's right. Be humble and gentle with it. And then it goes on to say be patient with each other. Be patient with each other. Be patient. Be patient with each other. Amen. It's funny how um, we want people to be patient with us. Because, you know, my habits didn't stop instantly once I got saved. My wife was very patient with me. <laughs> Amen. And, and we want patience when it's the other person. But sometimes we kind of forget 
And, and I have to admit, you know, I have children, and sometimes I'll be like, look, I told them to go clean the room up four minutes ago. What's their problem? Why ain't they in there cleaning? Then I'm, I'm like, okay, Lord, I need to be patient with my lovely children. Amen. You were patient with me. I, you know, I was um, <laughs> a hard head. That's what I'm called. Anyhow, moving right along because we're going to be here all day. Um, be patient with each other. Make allowances for each other's faults because of your love. You love them. I love my children. I love people. So I'm going to make allowances for you. That don't mean you can test me every day. Yes, right. Let's be clear about that. And you don't need to be tested by everybody every day. Amen. It's good. It means because sometimes you have to say, hey, you know what? I told you to go clean that up 40 minutes ago. I I'm going to need you to clean that up by 5 o'clock, please. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to, don't, you don't feel like you got to be run over. That's right. Amen. Be firm. Be clear. Have your authority, strength, and power under control. Be patient with folk. Recognizing that they live in a life too, especially as they get grown. Amen. For verse 3, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, united in your calling, united in who we are looking for for help, united in that. That's where we're united. We are all different. The Holy Spirit has got, and, and God has a different destiny for each and every one of us. And that's the beauty of us coming together in the unity of the Spirit. Let us keep going. Binding yourselves together with peace. Mm -hmm. We're not binding ourselves together for chaos, drama, and foolishness. Amen. We bind ourselves together with peace. Peace. Even if we don't vote yesterday, we got to let yesterday go. And if you can't let it go because you so emotionally turned up, then you need to go before the Lord. Help me turn me down. Yeah. I need to get off 10 so I can talk to my brother, sister, cousin, friend, colleague. Get me off 10, Lord. Amen. God can handle that. Yes, he can. But if you run in there with 10 like you had yesterday, then y'all might be on 50. And then you never know what the <laughs> outcome of that situation is going to be. But it definitely ain't going to be peace. That's right. I'm almost finished, and then I'm going to pray a general prayer. Verse 4, if you have uh, prayer requests online, feel free to submit them in the comments, because we need to bring this to a close and let God work on you individually as you go your separate ways. Verse 4, for there is one body, can we say that? One, one body and one spirit, can we say that? One, one spirit, that's our unity, just as you have been called to one glorious hope one. for the future. If you're breathing now, ask God to help you have hope for the future. Be part of that one glorious body and have that be unified around that one spirit. You don't hear nothing. Because verse 5 says, there is how many lords? One, one Lord. How many faiths? One. one faith. How many baptisms? One, one baptism. Amen. Verse 6, one God and father of all. Amen. Everybody that God created is a brother or sister. By creation. Right. We pray that they become kingdom saints by salvation. That's right. And then continue through that Holy Spirit transformation to be on one accord. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. One God and father of all. You can stand with me who is over all, if you can, and in all, not way out, in all, and living, as I say, through all. Amen. Father, thank you. We do as have we some pray. We have some prayer requests. Amen. Um, Apostle Vanessa asked for a prayer for her family, the Amen. unity in her family, salvation, stories, and um, for that, for their entire family. Family, unity in their family. Unity and, and that, you know, salvation for unity her family. Unity and salvation, amen. Apostle Vanessa, you say? Yes. Amen, amen. Apostle Vanessa Davis, yes. Amen, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have heard Apostle Vanessa Davis's request for unity. And Lord, I pray that your spirit is the spirit that falls upon each and every individual, Lord, and pricks their heart, Lord, and, 
and just encourages and urges them, Lord, to be saved and urges them to be baptized by your Holy Spirit, Lord, because we know that that is what will transform lives. We know that that is what heals. We know that that is what delivers people from wherever they are, whatever has been done to them, and whatever they have done, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we know that that is the spirit that we are praying to and that you are more than able to save, deliver, to baptize, to transform the family, Lord, and to unify them under the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Help that to dwell richly with them, Lord. Help it not to be an event, but a change and yes. a transformation that lasts and manifests itself in a day-to-day -day change in the way that they think so that they think about you. Change in what they say that it becomes true out of your word and change in what they do as they are led by the Holy Spirit that leads us into truth, all truth. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. And Lord, I pray for each and every person that's here that you would touch them, speak to them, Lord. Speak to their heart, speak to their spirit, speak to their day-to-day -day lives, Lord. Each one of us has challenges and situations that we are encountering right now, Lord. Some of us are concerned about our family. We're concerned about our health. We're concerned about our country, Lord. We're concerned about where we're living in the community, Lord. We're concerned about our resources and finances in order to survive, and even more than that, to thrive, Lord. And today, Lord, we lay these at your feet. We lay yet these at your feet because you are the one that can change our mind, that can give us hope, that can encourage us. And then most importantly, Lord, you are the one that will show us what is the step that we need to take and what is it that you will do. Lord, I pray that you make the vision and purpose for each and every person's life plain, Lord. Even if that is just a purpose for a day, Lord, if they just need, I just need to know what I need to do this afternoon. I need to know what it is I need to do this afternoon to say yes to God and have God fill my life. I need to know what it is that I need to do right now. Do I need to be saved? Is there anybody that doesn't know the Lord as their personal Savior? Today might be the day they need to say, yes, I want to be a child of God. I want to be what God has called for me to be. I want to be who that he has called for me to be. Amen. Is there one that wants to be saved today? Praise yes. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord. For touching Patricia today. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, for giving her an opportunity to walk through and say, I want to be saved. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Out to you, she needs to hear and be heard and be prayed for. 
So she uh, she is now she is now uh, spiritual. She is now uh, physically you made the way for her to walk in Jesus' precious name. Yeah, <laughs> 